Hello. <laughs> Welcome to an adventure. Uh, this is Wednesday, September 14th, if you were unaware. Um, at least I think it's the 14th. I don't know. I know it's mid-September. Um, <laughs> hopefully uh, you're having a good week and uh, we should have all reached midweek by now. We're almost to mid-September. Um, for those of you at a university, uh, like I am presently, uh, here in this room. Uh, I hope that your fall semester or fall term, or if you're down in the Southern Hemisphere, spring term, is going well. Um, I assume you also start in September, although I don't actually know. Uh, but <laughs> if anybody is uh, in the Southern Hemisphere and wants to fill me in on that, that'd be wonderful. Uh, I should say hi to the people that are here, and then we are going to, um... oh, thank you, I see the reminder. I did forget to activate the captions. Doing that now. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, we should have captions active on both streams. Um, so, yeah, welcome. I hope that your fall term is going well. Um, welcome to everybody who is here. I, I see in chat already, I see uh, uh, Lord Portico. I see uh, Key Squared. I see Hannah, Hannah, uh, Hannah, Hannah, B. I know I can say this right. Anyway, Hannah, uh, Iron Trout, uh, it is good to see all of you. Um, yeah, today we're going to be looking at some architecture materials. Um, it was an adventure. Uh, in advance of today's adventure, trying to make sure I'd be able to read some of the documents because they are not in English. And I do not speak Bulgarian or read Bulgarian or German, uh, which are the two languages I encountered in just flipping through things. So we'll see. But there's also a lot of actual architectural drawings in the collection that we can look at and um, you know have an interesting time even if we can't read the text of the documents. So before we dive into that, and before I give you some background on the architect whose materials we're going to look at today, um, we're going to start the stream the way that we always start the stream, uh, which is by looking at the um, land and labor acknowledgements. Wow, uh, it, it was a little hectic getting started today. Um, I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to see the chat once I pop over there. So give me one second to pull chat up on my phone uh, so that I can see if you post anything while I have to switch one of my um, things. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, oh, and, and there we go. There is a um, VT Acknowledges uh, command. That will give you the text of what we're about to look at. I, I'm sorry, I'm a little scattered at the moment. And you know, that is par, par for the course for this show. Uh, let me just switch scenes. And if you're new here, I'm streaming to two channels. And in order to have captions on both of them, I have to have them on separate computers. Uh, we have not figured out a way to feed one microphone into the captioner for both streams. Uh, so that's why I'm looking back and forth, because I've got chat on the two different computers. We're working on that, so that I won't have to look to the side quite so much in the future. Uh, but this should give you the land and labor, or the land acknowledgement and labor recognition. Uh, this is the official statement from Virginia Tech. Um, and I like to read this at the top of stream just so that we keep it in mind. As we're looking at historical documents, this is part of the history of the university and it's important to pay attention to. Um, it also is a commitment for what the university plans to do in the future. So Virginia Tech acknowledges that we live and work 
on the Tutelo and Monacan people's homeland, and we recognize their continued relationships with their lands and waterways. We further acknowledge that legislation and practices like the Morrill Act of 1862 enabled the Commonwealth of Virginia to finance and found Virginia Tech through the forced removal of Native nations from their lands, both locally and in Western territories. We understand that honoring Native peoples without explicit material commitments falls short of our institutional responsibilities. Through sustained, transparent, and meaningful engagement with the Tudelo and Monacan peoples and other Native nations, we commit to changing the trajectory of Virginia Tech's history by increasing Indigenous student, staff, and faculty recruitment and retention, diversifying course offerings, and meeting the growing needs of all Virginia tribes and supporting their sovereignty. We must also recognize that enslaved black people generated revenue and resources used to establish Virginia Tech and were prohibited from attending until 1953. Through inclusive VT, the institutional and individual commitment to UTPROSIM, that I may serve, in the spirit of community, diversity, and excellence, we commit to advancing a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive community. So thank you for always being willing to let me read that out. Um, Woohoo! Thank you for, for the shout out for the VTL Studios channel. Uh, for those people who are on my personal channel. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you could go there now. It's fine. They're both live. Uh, but, uh, yeah, indeed, uh, we have launched our fall season for the VTUL Studios Twitch channel. I don't know for sure all of the shows because I honestly have not had a chance yet to look um, at what the schedule is. I do know there's another Archives show. So this is not the only Archives show on the channel anymore. If you give me one second, I can tell you what the other one is. Uh, possibly. I'm going to try, at least. Um, do, 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 do. Programming. Well, I don't know the schedule. Uh, I don't see one listed here. Um, the plan is for this show to stay on Wednesdays. Um, possibly going to push it for an hour and start an hour later. Don't know. We might, we'll, we'll see. I need to discuss that with other people, but it is under consideration. Um, but yes, on Mondays now, uh, and if you, yeah, I don't know when. I don't know when. Monday afternoon, sometime. Uh, you can check on the VTUL Studios channel. Uh, there is a show called All Aboard uh, that is focusing on board games from our special collections and university archives. Uh, so they're taking a look at the archival object, so the board game itself, and then they're going to spend uh, multiple episodes creating a new version of it, so recreating it so that there is a duplicate of it that can be used to actually play the game. Uh, so the, they're starting with an archival object, then they are duplicating that object, and then they're going to play the board game. Uh, so the first one is, I, I don't remember what it was called, I believe it was a board game put out by a cocoa company, a European cocoa company, uh, sometime I want to say in the 1800s, but I don't remember exactly. Uh, but you can check out the VOD for um, the first episode of All Aboard over on twitch.tv slash VTUL Studios, uh, and then All Aboard will be airing on Mondays. Um, but yeah, also check out the channel for other things. There have been um, some interesting like makerspace type uh, things as well as some music production shows and some 3D environment design shows um, that have also been on this channel. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, uh, check out VTUL Studios. Um, but today is the day where we look at documents in the archives. And uh, today's topic is the Lilia Gramatikova architectural collection. It covers the period of 1960 to 2007, um, with most of the material from 1965 to 1981. 
And so uh, let me tell you a little bit about Lilia Gramatikova. Um, and actually, I can throw this up on screen so that you can read along if you uh, prefer that. Because I have that capability. Plus, it throws it up there and I can look at the screen while I'm talking to you. Um, all right, I'm going to go find the biographical note here. This is the finding aid. Um, finding aids are what we use to tell people what is contained in a manuscript collection. Um, a manuscript collection meaning um, any materials that are of an unpublished nature. So personal papers, things like that, um, go into manuscript collections. Whereas generally we don't put published works in manuscript collections. Usually we would pull those out, catalog them, and they go into the rare books collection instead. Um, so Lilia Bencheva Gramatikova was born in 1929 in Karnobat, Karnobat, Bulgaria. I have no idea if I am pronouncing her name right or the name of that town uh, right either. Um, I have never been taught Bulgarian pr pronunciations. Um, she graduated in architecture from Sofia Polytechnic in 1953 and began her practice in the Sofia State Design Organization uh, Sofproket from 1953 to 1965. I don't know this word. I'm going to uh, look it up. And you're all going to get to watch because that's the screen that I'm on. Um, Nope, not sprocket. That is, that is not indeed uh, the word. Although, you know, if you all know it, you can throw it in chat, but. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Not getting immediate results. Not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Uh, basically, went to a school. Um, Sophia State Design Organization Sofprokett. Uh, so I'm guessing it is some sort of term, uh, largely meaning school. Hi, hi, Shadows of Life. How are you today? Um, uncertain. Uh, she spent two years in Mongolia from 1961 to 1963, designing a youth center and its administrative council building. She transferred to Maine State Design Organization Glavprokhet. Okay, maybe that's the name. So Sofprokhet and Glavprokhet. Uh, the first one being Sofprokhet because it is Sofia design organization. And um, then the main design organization being Glavprokhet. I don't know. Uh, 1965 where she worked until her ret retirement in 1985. Between 67 and 82, she spent several years in Halle Neustadt uh, in East Germany, where she designed the Haus der Dienste, or Dienste. Uh, I, again, not certain if I'm pronouncing that correctly. An apartment complex for 16,000 inhabitants. She received several awards for her projects, including the Gold Order of Labor in 1980 and the Diploma of Merit from the Committee for Architecture and Urbanism of the Council of the Bulgarian Republic in 1981. So, we have uh, some architectural drawings as well as photographs of some of the uh, structures that she designed. Um, there is at least one uh, like published article, um, as well as copies of some awards and, and things like that. Uh, so that is the collection that we're going to look at. Oh, you, you all, we'll, we'll look, take a look at that in a second. Um, let me throw this in here real quick. Uh, bu -bu. Oh, <laughs> and I, I have shown you the back end. Um, been a while since I did that. I try not to do that, but, uh, you know, a peek behind the curtain. Uh, I was just throwing the, the finding aid into the chat on the um, VTUL Studios channel. Uh, hopefully, soon I will have um, 
a student who moderates that channel who will be able to throw those in for me. Uh, but I have to find time to write instructions for them first. So <laughs> um, anyway, I hope that you're all ready and interested to see some Eastern European architecture uh, from a woman architect. Um, this collection is part of our uh, International Archive of Women in Architecture um, that we house here. Uh, and how about we get started? I'm going to switch us to the top-down camera and start pulling out things. Incidentally, I have more little sandbags today than I've ever had for stream. Because I have rolled architectural drawings that we're going to try and look at. And I need to weight them down so they don't roll back up on themselves while I'm looking at them. <laughs> anyway, we're going to start with a little box. The only flat box in the entire collection. Um, as you can see, it is a giant gray field when you look at it from the top. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom out and show you the edges of the box. No, it, it, I have to zoom out like all the way and then you can see it's a thin uh, flat box here. We shall protect the archives from tiny floods. <laughs> the sandbags, the little sandbags. Um, yeah, they're little sand weights to, uh, um, I have two kinds. I, I have string weights. So these are just little, little weighted strings uh, that I can put across something to like hold down uh, edges or, or stuff like that. Um, so I've got a couple of those, but then I have a bunch of the little sandbags here. Uh, and these will really weight down corners and, and keep things like rolled architectural drawings from rolling back up on themselves. All right. It's going to be interesting today to try and navigate um, how the collections are accessed and uh, kept in order while I'm trying to do this on the tables here. Uh, I will just pull this over and sort of show you. In order to get the collections up here today on the cart, um, my cart isn't quite as long as the rolled architectural drawings, so I have used string to tie the boxes onto the cart so they wouldn't slide off while I was bouncing in and out of elevators and things like that. Um. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was a little hard to get back over the little uh, power cord that it was just on the other side of. Um, but our first items here, um, we have photocopy of personal residence. So this is not an original drawing, this one, um, but it's the informational content that we're most interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and um, your brain went an interesting way with the um, weighted string. I'm not certain where your brain went, but um, I'm glad that you found your way back. Uh, so this is the architectural plans for Gramatikova's personal residence. Uh, I may want to zoom out the camera just a tiny bit so that we get the entire thing on screen. Um, also, I managed to do a little bit of Bulgarian translation before the stream. Um, this was not one of those items. So for live translation, I'm using my phone because what I have discovered is it is actually um, easier to use your camera to quickly translate something on the fly uh, than it is to scan a document and try to run a translation 
using computer-assisted translation um, on a desktop. It is easier to get a, a computer-assisted translation um, just using your, your phone or your uh, tablet device than it is uh, to get something from a desktop computer. So I'm just gonna see, I don't know if it'll work. All right, oh it does, that's, that's cool. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it if I hold it here. Maybe, maybe sort of, it, it doesn't show up very well, but at least I can tell you that this here says South Facade. Uh, so, and then we have, um, architects take a lot of drawing classes. Um, we have an architecture program here, and uh, as part of that architecture program, they take drawing classes and drafting classes. And so this is uh, very much an architectural style, but if you see enough architects work, um, you can see they have their own artistic sense about them. There's a lot of straight lines and things like that. Um, so for the south facade of the house there, you've got a little porch area down here with um, a little reclining chair uh, and a lamp above it. We've got the angled roofs. It looks like some open window areas and maybe an indoor-outdoor dining space. I'm uncertain. I'm looking to see, uh, there is a date. It's, it's all the way off on the other edge of the paper, which we'll get to in a moment. But um, this house was designed in 1960, and I definitely see a 1960s sort of aesthetic in uh, some of the little details. Um, that makes sense. And then, so the next thing, um, so this just says floor distribution. Um, it translated it and then it went away. Come on. Uh, and the measurement is one to 100. Um, so we have, I don't think that's what that says. Uh, this apparently is the office. This it translates as mouth. I don't think it says mouth, but I'm not certain what it does say. Uh, I'm looking to see if I can get any of the other words to translate. Uh, all right, so garage over here. Come on. Anyway, it's good enough to get us a sense of it, uh, but I'm not gonna spend all of the time trying to translate things, although I say that as I immediately go to try and translate another word here. North facade, uh, and then to the, then we have the west facade, and I'm guessing the next will be east facade, and then, I don't know what this one is gonna say. That one doesn't want to translate, regardless. It's enough that we're oriented and we can sort of see, um, so this is the opposite side. Uh, we first looked at the south facade and so the south facing of the house had the large open windows. Um, and then on the north facing side, um, it appears we have probably what is gonna be the main entry uh, as well as smaller windows, because that would be uh, presumably the public facing side, um, as well as the door for the garage. All of that makes sense. Um, and then we have, of course, the interior again here. Um, oh, this might be a second floor possibly. I'm just looking at the layout and I'm guessing this is the second floor. I'm gonna see if it will. 
yeah, it doesn't want to translate the, the caption or the label for this one. Um, but that would make sense. Because then we would be looking at um, this staircase here coming up here, I think. Or no. No, there's a stair here that comes up to here. And this is sticking out over the entryway. But we've got the garage. I'm guessing the thing that it translated as mouth is the kitchen. Um, it would make sense. For that to be the kitchen, we've got a dining area here. We've got a main living area, uh, sort of a secondary lounge area, it looks like. It's interesting, there's a sofa drawn in here, but there's, I don't see a full, like, solid wall between them. So it's interesting that the sofa basically blocks off that entire space there, and there's a door there and a door there. That's interesting to me, uh, as just a little detail. Uh, that appears to be the outdoor terrace. Oh, this is the staircase down behind the house. And then this is the little lounge area outside. And so then upstairs. Oh, oh, I get it. I was very confused. I was like, why does this just end? Why are there no doors for these spaces? Because I don't think they're meant to be used as open spaces. This is the area. This is, yeah, no. If you look at the roof here, this is here. It's the little uh, opening area above the garage. I think. So this is the main, above the main vestibule, there's a room, uh, there's a larger room here. Looks like we have another little um, kitchenette area here. Because uh, I, I, I see a sink and possibly a small stove there with a dining table. And apparently this is a walkout little deck. Um, and I'm guessing that this might be a bathroom. It would make sense plumbing-wise. Um, so then if we go here, this is another little stair area. I don't know what this is. Please translate for me and tell me Uh, so the, the automated translation translated it as atelier, um, which I'm guessing is not the word they would use to describe that space, uh, but possibly. Um, so a workshop or a studio, especially one used by an artist or designer. So this appears to be above the second floor, just a very small space above the second floor where uh, they've got room for some little tables against the wall to work on. It is a really cute house. I think it I think it's well designed and absolutely fits with like a 1960s vibe um, artistically. Uh, so definitely would have been on trend when it was built. Um, 
yeah, I think it's really nice. It's interesting to me, when you look at it from the north and the south, you see the roof. And when you look at it from the east and west, it looks flat on top. Which is really interesting as a sort of like design feature. I wonder if if that's just in the drawing and if in reality you would actually like notice the roofing. Like I, I you you must because here I can see roof sticking through here, but then what is this above it? And I can see roof sticking through here, but then above it is, and then I think we have more roof there. And it's just interesting. They didn't draw the perspective in the front view because it's a schematic. Gotcha. I, I don't spend a lot of time with architectural records. And in fact, uh, haven't pulled a lot of these collections because I didn't have much table space for most of the time I've been streaming. And now that I have a larger space, I was like, I need to pull more architectural records because we have a lot of them. Um, I don't know what this is, possibly backyard or the, the building is according to the partial survey. That's what it says, according to the translator. Oh, this is its location on the lot. Um, so we've got the little house. This would be the street. This is like the backyard. That makes sense. Hi, Elixie. Yeah, many, many, many architectural records. Many, many architectural records. Uh, there will be more of them in future. Uh, this one was sort of an exploration of how well can I make it work on stream? And then I picked it, and I think I may have picked it because I wanted something Eastern Europe. We didn't have anything specifically Ukraine, um, which I think I was looking for. And so I ended up with this and didn't pay attention to the fact that it's basically nothing in English. But when I found that out, I was like, why would I let that stop me? Um, yeah. You've just spent a lot of time with engineering drawings and schematics. Hey, I, ex I appreciate the experience. Uh, like, having knowledgeable people show up and share that knowledge makes this show better. I learn, you learn. Um, I hope you learn. <laughs> somebody in chat learns. Uh, or somebody watching the VOD learns. I think, I think that it's a good thing. Um, oof. Built up square. Okay, so this is like the measurements. Uh, the dimensions of the house. The label in the bottom corner gives the address. Designed for own needs by architect Lilia Bencheva Gramatikova, Sofia, March 1960. I think it's a nice house. Oh. Hmm. No, I still don't know where that's at. I'm trying to figure out, so I thought in this overall design that I'd be able to figure out where the artist's studio is located. Um, cause this is the second floor or the like ground level floor, uh, with like, it's got like a half buried, it's got a garden level, which is like halfway underground, um, which is the first floor that we looked at, I think. <gasps> no. Oh. No, I, I had that wrong. This is the main level. 
this is the what I would was calling the second floor because this is the ground level on the front of the house. Incidentally, a lot of houses were built that way. Uh, I don't know how, I don't know about now, but I know 60s, 70s-ish, a lot of houses were built so that there was a walk-in, the, the ground level from the front, and then you went downstairs and could walk out the back. Um, and, and that's essentially what this is. So this is the ground level as seen from the front. You go downstairs and you've got this, and this must be the part, yeah, this is the part under the garage. And so then do you go down again to get to the artist area? Because I was thinking this was like an attic, but I, now I think this is actually yeah, this is actually below the, the lower level. So if I look on here, the artist studio is not depicted on here. It's, it's down here, it's below the drawing. I, I definitely see that picture up there, but Based on the stairs, unless, I don't know, I could be imagining things. I'm not certain exactly where it is. It does seem like that would make sense, but I think that's, that's this support. So here we have, oh, it just shows stairs up and down on all of them. I don't know where her, her artist studio is located in her house. Are there numbers that tell me how these connect together? It doesn't look like there are but I may just not know how to read it. It's fine. <laughs> Interesting architectural drawing. There are a lot more to look at, so I'm not gonna, I, I'm, I'm gonna move on from that. But I thought that was pretty cool. Next, I have uh, some documents that we're gonna look at. Um, some biographical information, some photographs. Let me move the box out of the way. So the biographical information folder has the majority of the like document documents, the text-based documents in the collection. Um, and since I had to look at this stuff because I knew there was a language issue. I've already covered up the address because I have no idea if that address is still relevant or not. Uh, so rather than broadcasting an address all over the internet, I went ahead and covered it. We don't always get that luxury on this show because oftentimes, I don't know, it's there until I put the document down on screen and then, then we suddenly find out, oh, there's an, an, an address, but... Um, Lilia Bencheva Gramatikova was born 18 May 1929 in Karnobat, where she completed high school in 1947. Graduated in architecture in 1953 from Sofia Polytechnic and began her practice in uh, Sofbrukhet. Spent two years in Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia, uh, designing the youth center and its administrative council building. Then back in Sofia, she transferred to Glav Brokett, where she worked until her retirement in 85. Uh, between 67 and 82, she spent several years in East Germany, where she designed the Haus der Denste, um, which all of this was copied over into um, our finding aid. So, in fact, we may have copied that summary uh, word for word. 
Uh, but then we have a list of her architectural works here. So she has done, it looks like a lot of multifamily, um, then personal residence, and then the music high school for folk instruments and folk singing, which um, we have a lot of stuff for in this collection. <clears throat> a hotel in the Allen Mach neighborhood in Varna, uh, an apartment building, a personal villa, uh, design projects for the expansion of the Territorial Information and Communi Computing Center, uh, Vratza Preliminary Design, first variant drawings number 2 through 12, and second variant drawings number 2 through 11, site plan. <clears throat> I think this summary, uh, yes, I was, I was about to say, because this mentions IAWA, uh, this summary was compiled by Milka Bliznikov, um, who was the driving force behind the creation of the International Archive of Women in Architecture, um, and is also one of the primary reasons why there's heavy representation of Eastern European women in the collection, um, because Milka knew a lot of them personally and invited them to deposit their things with us. Um, we've worked to expand beyond Eastern Europe, but Milka is the reason why we have a lot of Eastern European uh, architects represented. Um, this is basically just a duplicate. Ah. Right, then we have this article. Um, I don't know why this photocopy is of the last page of the article, which is page 12. We're gonna look at the first page of the article, page one. Um, we could look further, but page one is the only one I have been able to translate in the time that I had available. So, <laughs> and beyond that, I did not manage to translate the title, but I do believe it says, <clears throat> Architectural Spring in uh, Smolian region, in the periodical, um, it's, it's from the periodical Rodopi, uh, Number 12, uh, 1979, pages five through nine. Apparently it's by Nikolai Kaitov, uh, but this was in among the papers. Um, so we're gonna take a look because presented with this and knowing that I was gonna be streaming this collection, what do you think I did? First I looked for a way to have a computer automatically generate um, Translation live. That beyond using a phone, not super easy. And the phone doesn't actually recognize this text. I tried. Uh, I scanned this document. I ran, well, I scanned the document. I got it uh, converted into OCR text. Uh, optical character recognition, and then I corrected the optical character recognition uh, and ran it through an online translation service to get a translation. So, I'm going to read you the first page. It's not very long. The text is very large. Um, but it, it took me a couple hours, I think, and a lot of that was figuring out how to get it to run OCR, because uh, there were some limitations there. But, Architectural Spring in Smolyansko. Uh, <clears throat> for the for Prolot in the fall, don't talk about it, but the case deserves to be forgotten that it is summer. I'm sh the, not the greatest phrasing there, but that's how it translated. Um, that the leaves are already dripping, that when these notes of mine appear in the light of day, it will probably be cold and frosty in the Rodopes and Smolian. The architectural style that is now flourishing in Smolian is so bright, remarkable, and eponymous that it deserves attention. So that was that first part. And with a little bit of work, I'm sure I could have gotten a more intelligible beginning to the sentence. So, for the proletariat in the fall, 
Um, I'm not sure. So the phrases are, don't talk about it, but the case deserves to be forgotten, that it is summer, that the leaves are already dripping, that when these notes of mine appear in the light of day, it will probably be cold and frosty. So it's, it's basically, it's fall. We don't want to think about the fact that summer is gone. The leaves are already falling, and soon enough it'll be winter. That is the introduction to this article. Uh, <clears throat> it attracted me from afar two and a half decades ago when, the first, when for the first time in our country, the question of the national in architecture began to be seriously discussed, of architecture, national in form, and socialist in content. Some thought that with this formula, it will be possible, as if with the magic, uh, with the magic sesame, uh, <clears throat> to solve almost all problems related to the creation of a national in form and socialist in content architecture in a short time. But it turned out that this is not as easy as we imagined. In theory, we were all of one mind, architects, builders, and renovators. But construction five-year periods slipped by. Fences disappeared like mushrooms, one higher and wider than the other. Whole cities and villages were, so to speak, rebuilt, and the wish, the dreamed national shape, persistently eluded us. We were looking for it in the beginning as an atmosphere, though one or two Bulgarian, or through one or two Bulgarian curves above windows and doors called uh, kobolitsi. We applied these kobolitsum uh, even to fences with capitals and columns, and what columns? Then the time of this architectural transformation passed and the new cubic time in our modern architecture came, which lasts, with few exceptions, to this day. So it took a couple hours to get that first page done, mostly because um, this is typed with a typewriter. Uh, and there's not a lot of crisp character distinctions, so the optical character recognition struggled, and even sometimes I struggled to identify some of these letters um, where we've got the letter here. I don't know what they're called in Cyrillic, um, but the, the second letter in that, in that word that looks like a letter E, uh, like it, it's the same as an English letter E, but oftentimes it's hard to distinguish that letter from an O uh, at the end of that four letter word, or from the, the, what would be the English letter C, which is that single character between the words there. Um, it's hard to tell them apart. Uh, which made it really hard for the OCR, plus some of the, um, this is a photocopy out of a book, it, it looks like, and so there's some copying elements or, or problems where we've got some um, stray markings on the page that made it hard for the optical character recognition. So it took a little bit of time, but with a little bit of work, if somebody was really interested in reading this, they could. Um, even if they don't read Bulgarian. Um, I was not able to find this journal available digitally online, or I would have grabbed the text from there to run against a translation, because that would have been much faster. Uh, but I thought it was interesting since it was in here. I thought I'd see what it took. Um, and yeah, with a couple of hours of work, and honestly not the most boring work in the world, I had fun doing it. Um, installing a virtual Bulgarian keyboard uh, and then copying the OCR text, putting it in a word processor and correcting the characters that it wasn't able to get and then dropping all of that text into a translator, I was able to get um, a fairly decent translation. I would want to do a little bit more work on the first part there to clean it up so it made more sense. but. All of that was with tools that I had free access to. Anyway, next we have some of the awards to look at. Is this fun? I think it was fun. Uh, so 
we have some documents and then people in processing the collection have uh, written some translation of what they felt would be important to know. So the Union of Bulgarian Architects, 1979, Sofia. I'm just going to double check. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's translating through the page to the page behind it. OK, so this first page just says the Union of Architects in Bulgaria, 1979. Oh, no, it says Review of Architectural Creativity. It's, it's translating the words behind the first page. Uh, so here, though, the Union of Architects in Bulgaria uh, so the, the written translation, which probably was generated by one of our students in processing this, um, they wrote that this reads, the Union of Bulgarian Architects recognized uh, Lelia Gramatikova for her contributions to the architecture field, Sophia 1979. And the automated translation that I can do on my phone comes out um, fairly the same. So it's an award certificate. Fairly straightforward, that one. The next one is another award. This is all part of the biographical information folder here. Um, for this one, the Union of Bulgarian Architects bestows the gold insignia to architect Lilia Bencheva Gramatikova for her active and creative contributions to architecture in conjunction with her 70th, this says her 70th birthday in 1979, um, which yes, it would be her 70th because she was born in 1929. So that makes sense. Next, we have uh, German. <laughs> it's German text instead of Bulgarian this time. Um, architectural prize bestowed to Lilia Gramatikova in uh, Halle, Germany in 1982. Um, that's all that it says in the note here. But if I pull this up in with a German to English on my phone, we'll see what it says. The Council of the Halle District awards the, I don't know why it was showing, uh, awards the Architecture Prize of the Halle District, the Dippel Ing Architect, I don't know, that doesn't make sense. I, I'm sure it gave me actual words for that before, but it, it doesn't want to today. Uh, but to Lilia Gramma, Lily Gramatikova for the architectural design of the Houses of Services in Halle Neustadt. Halle Neustadt. Um, Halle, June 27th, 1982, signed by the chairman of the Halle district. Diplom engineer. Thank you, Fluidan. Oh, you're here. I could just ask you what they say. But I'm having fun with the computer translators. <laughs> At least the German ones I could ask you. <laughs> um, I don't think this one... This one doesn't have a note from our student. So let's see here what I can get from my phone. Uh, VEB, it says Web Project Planning and Technology Hall, combined operation of the Web WBK Hala Customs Administration of the GDR is what it's translating, but I don't think that's what it says. Um, certificate. Uh, um, a diploma architecture, Lilia Gramatikova, uh, residing in Sofia, um, 
VR Bulgaria certifies that as a designer of the object House of Services, Hala Neustadt, uh, in the collective with the Architecture Prize 1982 of the Hala District Council. In return, she received a cash bonus of 500 received. Uh, this looks like the 19th of October, 1982. Uh, Web is a term for an East German company. And Zoli means customs. Yeah, so this is just documentation <clears throat> that in conjunction with receiving an award for having done <clears throat> architectural design work, they also uh, provided a prize of 500 currency. Um, and I'm guessing this was documentation of that for customs purposes, if I'm reading correctly. I will hydrate. Thank you, Portico. <clears throat> but documenting also for us that they gave her an architecture prize in 1982 <laughs> and that it came with 500 I don't know what currency it would have been in that city at that time 1982 in uh, Halle, which I'm guessing was East Germany. I don't know which currency. Would it have been marks? I wasn't sure if East Germany. Would Halle, is, is Halle East German or, or was it West Germany? Because I knew West Germany had uh, did marks. I don't know what currency East Germany East Germany also used marks. I wasn't sure if they would have been on whatever the Soviet currency was. I haven't actually really paid attention to the currencies that the Soviet states used during the Soviet Union. Um, this one is a copy of, let's see, Diploma of Merit bestowed by the Committee for Architecture and Urbanism of the Council of Ministers of the Bulgarian Republic to Lilia Gramatikova for the Music High School for Folk Instruments and Folk Singing at the First World Biennial Exhibition in Sofia, December 6, 1981. Ah, okay, so the, in the West it was the Deutsche Mark and in the East it was just the Mark. Huh. So this is interesting. And I love um, the actual um, translation of it that was done by the person that processed this is done properly, where every time it breaks, they move to the next line. Um, so that's pretty cool. There's not much more in this folder, and then we'll glance at some photos and then look at the architectural drawings that go with those folder or, or photos. Um, <clears throat> here we have a diploma of merit of the Council of Shiroka Luka be bestowed to Lilia Gramatikova for her contributions to education, 25 May eight, 1987. I could bump the camera so that we can see the whole thing at once, or at least most of it at once. I could bump it out further, but. I look at it and I'm just like, these symbols, some of them have meaning to me, but I know in looking at this document that that meaning is entirely wrong. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what the letters are called in the Cyrillic alphabet. I feel like I should, but also I've never needed those symbols for any of the languages that I tried to learn. Uh, and then we have some newspaper article 
Um, this is from a German newspaper. Uh, die Tagstrasse. Uh, dated 31 October 1982. It announces um, architectural prize bestowed on two Bulgarian architects. Uh, and then it has pictures of Lilia Gramatikova and Milka Ibieva. Ibieva? I, I didn't, I don't know. Ah. It's spelled I-L-I-J-E-W-A. Ilieva. Um, <clears throat> so, and then, but it also has a picture of, I believe, probably what they had designed. Let's see if I can get any sort of. The German-Bulgarian Collective received a high award for the House of Services. Ready to install partition wall for modernization. The assembly of prefabricated partitions saves on construction and repair. Combine uh, effort a third of the cost. Co combined effort is a third of the cost compared to using bricks. A total of 13 types of in industrially prefabricated parts for modernization in, in the combine. Uh, the construction workers also use double glazed framed windows and complex pipe bundles in the electrical and sanitary areas, which result in faster work and lower costs. By the end of August, they had handed over more than 100 modern apartments to the tenants, thereby fulfilling their obligations to complete. In 1983, wherever technically possible, they wanted to use large panels and prefabricated chimneys instead of the normal sized roof tiles. This should help the combine to reconstruct 300 apartments in 80 to 100 year old houses in the coming year. Interesting. It's a kind of a mall. That's what, okay. The House of Services, is, it's like a mall. Anyway, that's pretty cool. It continues on to a second page. It's a pretty extensive article. This would be one that actually would be fairly easy and straightforward to get like a computer generated translation of um, because this font would likely be grabbed pretty easily by um, optical character recognition and then it wouldn't take too much to clean it up. Part of the reason why the Bulgarian text was time consuming for me to work with um, <clears throat> was because, like I said, the letters are kind of muddy, as you can see, but also it's a completely different alphabet. And I did not know the location of the characters on the keyboard when I started. And so I had to get used to where the letters were when I wanted to, to type one. Uh, whereas working with that German document um, would be much faster because I could just use an English keyboard because it's the same character set for the most part. Anyway, I'm going to move on now to some photographs. Um, and then we're going to dive into the architectural drawings, which we will spend the rest of the time with. Um, I heard something. Oh, it's in the music. It's like, what is that? <laughs> All right. Ooh. I have a glove because I think some of these are going to be glossy. Let's see what we have. So the first envelope in here, um, Lilia Gramatikova, Music School for Folk Instruments and Folk Singing, Village Shiroka Luka, Smolian District, 1971 to 1979. So this is um, a large portion of the collection is dealing with the design work that she did for this school, 
which is a folk music school in Sofia, Bulgaria. Um, and this appears to be some photos during construction. We'll zoom in. Uh, if I go to the right page and actually click the right buttons, we'll zoom in. Um, yeah, and then I will adjust where I have the picture sitting. These, I believe, had to have text on the back. I'm gonna try, we'll see. Nope, nope. I know some of them do. This one does not. Um, yeah, so this is the high school under construction. You can see uh, a little bit sort of the levels again uh, with the sort of flat angled roofs, um, which she had used in her personal residence. This is only a couple years later. Uh, this is like 11 years later-ish that she would have been designing this. Um, but this is a large structure, and as you can see, um, it's positioned at the base of a, a mountain. Uh, so it actually moves up slope as you progress through the building. It's interesting. I, I glanced at these photos when I was looking for something to use for the promotional image uh, and, and what will be the like cover image for the VOD, um, which is why I know sort of what this looks like. But uh, you've got some little people down in the corner there as well. Um, another view here with some stairs. Oh, whoops, sorry. I'm used to the camera is usually faced a little bit further back. Um, so I'm, ha I'm working a little forward of where I usually do, but I positioned the camera differently today because I knew the blueprints are gonna be big. So all of this, it has an aesthetic to it that I don't think I necessarily associate with uh, Soviet countries, um, which at the time this was very much part of the Soviet Union. And we're so used to, in, in so much Western media, uh, so much like movies and television, the architectural style that we see for Soviet construction is very brutalist, very blocky, very square, very uh, buildings that don't feel like they have a ton of design. They do, it's just brutalist design, uh, which was a movement in architecture. Um, this doesn't have that. This has lots of windows, it's got levels, it's got angled roofs, it's not that very cubic style that was referenced in the, um, the Bulgarian document uh, that I read part of. Um, so I think for me, it was really cool sort of, it's really cool discovering this and being like, hey, this was built, designed and built in the Soviet Union. And it is not that very blocky, cubic, brutalist design that permeates the movies. And the Soviet Union wasn't the only place that those brutalist buildings were built. We built them here in America. Um, large parts of um, wow, country name, hello, country name. Uh, Brasilia in Brazil um, are brutalist as well. Um, so, but I I think it's really cool getting to see. This could easily, easily have been something built just kind of anywhere in the world around that time. It looks 
it, it, she was working in the style of the 60s and 70s. And it shows. She was very much on trend uh, with the current artistic movement at the time. The German article said the Bulgarians learned in Eastern Germany the large panel system building called Plattenbau. Ah, so that was the, um, what the, the, the translation was trying to get me to understand about like, um, having panel walls instead of building with brick. So this is, this is one of her major projects, when, uh, uh, which is why we have photographs of it in here. Um, also just, that is a really neat school. I would love to have gone to a school that was in a setting like that and oh gosh, look at, it's, it's just neat. I like it. The just, It's definitely a more interesting architectural specimen than the actual like high school that I went to. Um, kind of an early prefab system. Yeah, that was that was sort of what I was understanding from the rudimentary uh, like computer generated translation that I got. But having fluid in here is lovely because it means that at least for the German documents, I have confirmation of understanding where like. For the things in Bulgarian, I'm not certain. Although I will say, um, online automated translation has improved a lot, the same way that online automated captioning has improved a lot. It's still not perfect, but it's much better than it used to be. Looks like the kind of school that would be investigated by ghost hunters many years later. Oh, for the record, not a bad thing. Um, that's an excellent description. Uh, so here we have another image of the school. This time it is in postcard form. Uh, so don't need the gloves because postcard not going to suffer the same as glossies, um, as like actual like photographic prints. Uh, but let me see if the camera will grab a translation here. It registered the text, but it did not render that text into words. Oh, it's because I've got it set for German. And this is Bulgarian. Ah. Okay, so it says uh, music school a long wait, according to the, the quick auto translation that my phone can do. You agree, you wish you could have gone to that school. It's a beautiful school. Uh, just, I mean, look at it from the bottom here. Plus, this is a folk music school. Uh, I'm guessing the students did not dress in traditional folk costume every day, but clearly they were learning folk music. They were dressing in traditional folk costume at least part of the time, or at least maybe for performances, um, for this photo, certainly. So it's really cool. And I think, I think the design of the building fits the area really well. Um, it's got levels, which sort of fits in. It, it, it fits in. It looks like it belongs in those mountains, at least to me. Give you an accordion and a little oompa oompa all day long. Um, Oh, we're gonna we're gonna give this a shot. 
I did not translate this in advance. A representative ensemble of the music school Shiroka Luka in front of the school building. Representative ensemble of... Of... Oh, yeah. It even says it in English underneath. But um, interestingly, the English does not mention that they're standing in front of the school building, where in the Bulgarian it does. I didn't notice that it had an English translation, but I'm also glad that I used the camera because we got that little extra, even we could tell from the picture, but. Yes, music school for folk instruments and folk singing. Let's, hang on one second, I have to put a glove on again. All right. Uh, this is this is where I pulled. I ended up using two images for the um, promo slash vod cover, uh, and these are they. So we'll start a nice black and white sort of winter image there. We saw this. This is the same image that we just had, um, I think. In It was in one of the smaller black and white photos. It was not the one from the postcard, because that was a summer image, but kind of the same shot. And then we have um, photographic prints of the architectural designs for the building, which we'll take a glance at the photos of them, but I'm pretty sure we have the actual architectural designs themselves. Oh, I don't think I need to zoom, because these are small. Well, I, okay, I do need to zoom a little. They're a little bigger than that. Uh, there we go. So, I don't know, and, and we'll, we'll figure it out when we look at the designs for sure. I'm trying to see. Ah, so this is the main entrance here, and then these are some of the upper level rooms. And then here we have um, where the main entrance is. These are the going to be the stairs. Looks like they have an auditorium here. There's a piano pictured up. At, oh, sorry. I need to move the thing up a little bit. Uh, so an auditorium with a seating area, a piano on the little stage, um, and a little like backstage area off to the side here so that people can enter from the hallway to the stage. I don't know what 13 is here. Uh, maybe when we get to like the architectural blueprints, it'll be labeled. Otherwise, I'm guessing these are like practice rooms, uh, classroom. This is, appears to be like a dining area here. So yeah, quick little photos that are stuck in with the other photos, but also are the blueprints. Um, and then we have a photo printed out on computer paper here of, of the school actually in operation with some snow on the roof and a bus and a car, somebody walking up the steps. It's kind of neat. But that takes us through all of the stuff that was in that first box. And we're going to move on and look at the actual like architect architectural drawings. Whew. Words as they come out of my mouth being more difficult to say than I had anticipated. Mm. Oh, and we're getting a raid from 16-Bit Eric. Uh, let me 
pop over to the face cam here. Um, hello. Hello and welcome in. Uh, thank you so much, Eric, for the raid. Welcome, everybody. I am Rogan27, uh, otherwise known as Anthony Wright Day Hernandez, Community Collections Archivist here at Virginia Tech. Um, you have raided in on my personal channel, uh, which is twitch.tv slash Rogan27. Uh, this show actually goes out to both my channel and the library's channel here at Virginia Tech. Uh, so I'm streaming live to both Rogan27 and to twitch.tv slash VTUL Studios. And this is my weekly show where I do, um, I share materials from our archives. Uh, if anybody is here and is not already following 16-Bit Eric, you should definitely give a follow. 16-Bit uh, Eric is a wonderful, uh, wonderful human uh, who does tabletop role-playing games online, um, has a, a couple times a week a hangout on his channel, uh, does a little bit of gaming, and really has kind of one of the best communities I've ever encountered on the internet. Uh, so if you're not already following, you should give a, give a follow over there. Um, there's good stuff and you can, you can learn from the community there. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, oh, <laughs> oh hi! Um, so anyway, uh, this show, as I said, this is a show that I do once a week on Wednesdays for um, work stuff. I share things from the archives here and we have a lot of fun. Uh, what we're looking at today is uh, the Lilia Gramatikova Architectural Collection. So far we've looked at some uh, biographical information and photos of one of her projects. We're about to dive into architectural blueprints. Um, it has been an interesting time working with this collection because I do not read Bulgarian or German. And so far those are the two languages that have been in the collection. Um, I had done a little bit of uh, pre-stream translation work so that I could at least have a sense of what the uh, Bulgarian things had in them. Um, and that was interesting. But now I'm going to try. I have tied the boxes to the cart. So uh, one second while I untie some strings here. Let go. How was Eric's stream today? I mean, I was there for part of it, but how was how was the gameplay? Uh, I think I don't know what you were playing. <laughs> yeah, Lord Portico is is really good uh, as a moderator. I appreciate him. Very much. All right. We're going to dive in and look at some of these things. And I'm opening this box wrong. I have not spent a lot of time with these boxes. Uh, join me as we look down at the table again. I will zoom out. <laughs> you have one job on this ship. It's not stupid, and you do it well. Uh, but I get the reference. All right. So you get to see some of the behind the scenes because I've zoomed out all the way. Uh, this is the box that I currently have. And my initial instinct was to open it on the side here. That's not right. I'm supposed to open it from the end. Uh, this is box Three, incidentally, if you glance at the finding aid, it should tell you what is in box three. And if I ever manage to open the box, we'll find out when we look inside. Um, oh, dear. Come on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yes, many of the thanks to the Lord Portico. All right. 
This is exciting. This is the first time that I have attempted to do, uh, I mean, it's not the first time I've done blueprints, but the previous collection had like three or four, or I don't know, a set of 19, something like that. They were smaller. And I checked it out ahead of time. This time I was like, oh, we got three boxes of this. Let's do it. Because I knew I had a larger table space to work with. I don't know how well it's going to work, though. Uh, but we like the chaos of experimentation here as we explore things from the archives. Um, oh. What is in box three, I wonder? If anybody's, let me look at the finding aid here. Box three. Uh, so this box has materials from the expansion of the Territorial Information and Computer Center in Vratza, Bulgaria from 1981. Um, so, as I said, uh, these are actually rolling out really nicely, but I am gonna toss some weights around. <laughs> uh, just to kinda weigh it down a little bit. I don't want to overburden. And I'm gonna push all of you off to the side just a little bit here. Because um, these computers pres present a little bit of a problem, but uh, we'll put the lighter weight, which is the string weight, down here at the bottom. I just want it flat enough so that I can attempt to run translation of the text using my camera, um, using my phone, which is what we've been doing for everything I did not translate in advance, which is most of it. Uh, legend. All right, so the first symbol here, those are coniferous trees. These are broadleafed trees. Uh, these are ornamental shrubs. And... This translates as color figures. I think it means flowers. I'm uncertain. It just says color figures. Uh, but that would be these sections here, so I'm not certain. Color figures. Fun archival fact, string weights are also called snake weights. Beware the danger. Noodle snakes. <laughs> danger, danger noodle weights. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm being silly now. Um, yeah. March 25th, 1981. This appears to be an exterior design um, that has been provided so far. This is the largest thing I have shown on stream. And I'm going to try and just tilt. You all will have to bear with me if I struggle to read your comments. Because you're way off to the side now. Um, but this is, this is working. We have larger items in the collection. I may need to get... I have plans. I have plans to get chat up on screen there so that I don't have to look to the sides at all and I can have these computers really off the table. I have dreams of making this stream much more than it is. Interestingly, that first drawing was rolled up around the others rather than with them. All the others are rolled together. So we're going to look at them together, which might get interesting. We might have to do one at a time. I don't know. Because they're on onion skin and really see-through. How is it for you all? I think the overlapping lines are a little difficult. So I think we're going to do one at a time. This is fun, and I'm excited that I finally have a table big enough to do some architecture stuff with. 
Um, oh. I'm going to let this one roll, and I'm going to put it to the side. I just have to remember to put it back around the others when it comes time to move on from this. <laughs> um, all right, let's see here. I said I was going to do one at a time, and then I proceeded to open them all up again. Uh, mostly because I'm trying to figure out, they are numbered. Uh, yeah. I think that first one was number one. That big one was number one. And the rest of these are after that. Yeah. On this ship, you do admit to having several jobs. You do, in fact, have several jobs. And I appreciate that you show up and help out. Mm. All right. First drawing. I think it's less distracting with the pattern of the table. In future, uh, I, I don't know. I guess in my brain, I assumed that these would be blueprints, um, meaning dark blue with white writing. Um, in future, I'll make sure I bring up a board of solid color to set them on so that we don't get the texture or the, the color of the table showing through, the texture of the table showing through. Anyway, a drawing. I suppose I should find out what this says. Uh, it's, it's reading as uh, Kip Glav project, uh, pro project at the cab. Hmm. Let's see what this says. Unless anybody in chat can read Bulgarian and just tell me. I'm assuming no. Come on, is letters. They're actually really clearly written. And it just doesn't want to translate them. Come on. This is really, it's useful and yet not useful. Too far away for you to read, even if you could read Bulgarian. Uh, I mean, I can zoom in a little for sure. The, these are smaller. But for some reason, this main, I can also find out. I have a Bulgarian virtual keyboard, and I can type it into a, an online translator. But also, the characters in the title are not, they look the same in the Latin alphabet and the Cyrillic alphabet, so let's find out what it says. Translate for me, Bulgarian to English. Oh. No, 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 other way around. Those are not, interestingly, apparently, I have to put it in as the Cyrillic characters or it doesn't like it for the translator. It's OK. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, It's very, 
very slow. I don't know where the letters are on a Cyrillic key or on the Bulgarian keyboard, but I'm almost there. Also, it's a lovely drawing. Basement. It says basement. And now my computer will type in Cyrillic until I shut that off. Uh, this is the basement. <laughs> it would have been really, really lovely if, uh, if, okay. See, over here it'll grab it. I, I'm guessing because these all look like Latin characters. Uh, this wasn't grabbing it because the only letters on screen were the, were things that looked like Latin characters. Um, so this is a warehouse. Two, it says battery. I don't know what that would mean. Maybe utility room. Six is air conditioning installation. Eight and nine are the bathrooms. I, oh, there they are. Uh, 10 is cleaning supplies. Some of these others, it just doesn't want to do. So it's a basement level. It's got utilities and other things like that. So this is design work by Lilia Gramatikova. She did, uh, if I'm remembering from the things we've read, for this project, she did um, all of these drawings. There, was, there were two sets of drawings on this project, and she did all of them in the first round and all but one of them in the second round. Woo! Here we go. This is, oh. I did this backwards. That's drawing 11. We were going from drawing two. I'm supposed to pull the one from the inside next. I begin to understand why it takes our students a little bit of time when they come in to study architectural drawings. Uh, they are somewhat difficult to work with as, as a medium. I think this says attic. But we'll type into the web page that will tell me for sure. Um, maybe. Maybe not. I don't see this letter anywhere on the keyboard. Oh, there it is. I found it. Oh, wait. What? That still didn't help. It recognized it as Mongolian, but it didn't really translate it. It just 
changed all the letters to English letters. I E. Ah, I have an extra letter. I, n there, no. Come on now. Behave. Let's go to Bulgarian. Floor! It is Bulgarian. I thought maybe it was mass because uh, it suggested Mongolian, and we know that she w did work in Mongolia. But no, it, it's it's in Bulgarian. Um, first floor. It's the first floor. That should have made lots of sense. But yet, took a little bit of work to get to. But we'll know now uh, when we see this, this is floor, and this is a Roman numeral in front of it. <laughs> this is part of the adventure, is, is trying to figure this stuff out. All right, uh, room one on here is the wardrobe. Two and three are dressing rooms. What was the name? What was this building? Why did they need dressing rooms? This is the expansion of the Territorial Information and Computer Center in Vratza, Bulgaria. I'm guessing cloakrooms or closets. Um, four is base stock. Five and six are bathrooms. And seven is the cleaning area. Eight is security. Nine is a teacher's office. Ten is children's entertainment. 11 and 12, again, dressing, well, no. 11 is dressing room, 12 and 13 are, are again, restrooms. And 14 is, um, it says entry food. But it does appear to be an entryway from outside. Interesting, I don't know uh, precisely what to do with that, but interesting. Get these rolled up properly so that it takes less time when I'm tearing down. Um, if anybody knows anything about this building or what it was for, uh, I'm open to learning or wants to go out and find out. That's part of the adventure, is uh, if, if people feel like it, they can go out and learn about the things that we're looking at and share it with everybody. Because I'm not an expert. Definitely not an expert on 1980s um, Bulgarian architecture. So second floor, I think we can easily tell that Nine and 10 are restrooms, 11 is a cleaning area. I'm guessing most of these are gonna be offices. Ah, one it labels as a tech laboratory. Uh, two is programmers. Three, RL change. Four is operators. So two, those are laboratories. Oh, it, here, it, it, it did it differently. It said one is tech programmers. The twos are laboratories. Three, RL change. I don't know what that means. Four is operators. Five, it did not translate this time around. Six is software. Seven is a machine lab, uh, library. Eight is a machine room. I do not know what the, the um, KAK is. I, I, I don't know what five is, but. Neat, neat. Um, yeah. But I wanna see if I can find the high school 
because we saw pictures of the high school. I can show the pictures of the high school uh, for everybody who didn't show up. But we have pictures of the high school, and it was a folk music high school, and it looked really cool. And I would like to see the blueprints for that, which I know they're in here. These are neat, but I haven't seen the exterior of this building, so it's somewhat less interesting to me. I'm just gonna get these rolled up properly again so that I can not, not have them get lost. Um, that would be bad. This is as close as we had to an exterior of this building. Anyway, I hope that you are all having a wonderful Wednesday afternoon, or uh, I guess it would be Thursday morning if uh, if any of our friends from like New Zealand, Australia area have joined us today. Oh, hello, Ensnared Night. Yes, we are looking at some building blueprints uh, from the Lilia Gramatikova Architectural Collection. It's part of the... Um, International Archive of Women in Architecture that we have uh, in Special Collections and University Archives in Newman Library. Um, I can drop info here for you. Uh, so that'll give you some basic information on the collection. Um, I have successfully put the blueprints back in this box. Let me see which which box I want for the um, box two. Box, yeah, box two. And box four. <laughs> and uh, ensnared right. Part of the reason why I didn't notice your chat right away is. Um, I'm streaming to two channels, and the other channel just tends to have a more active chat. Uh, I do try to look both ways, because I have computers on either side, one for each channel. Uh, but, all right, we're going to look at this high school. Um, these have tape around the edges, and it is old tape, so we're going to get to have a moment to be sad about encountering tape in an archival situation. Um, I should never have put this folder away. All right. So we're looking at this high school. Honestly, the postcard is the best picture in here for it. This collection uh, or the, the documents, the blueprints, the drawings, the architectural drawings we're about to look at are of this building here, which is a folk music high school. Um, that is, it is the music high school for folk instruments and folk music. S sorry, the music high school for folk instruments and folk singing in uh, Shiroka Luka, in the Smolian district in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria. Or no, Sh Shiroka Luka is the name of the town. I don't think it's actually in Sofia. Um, yeah, Shiroka Luka. Uh, so this is the exterior of what the building looks like. This is what the students attending look like. And we're gonna look at the architectural blueprints. The architectural drawings. And as you can see, they have masking tape around the sides. Again, it's that onion skin paper. Uh, so I did not know they were onion skin or I would have brought something. Also, I honestly didn't remember that this table had a wood grain pattern to it. Um, 
I will remember for future architectural collections that I should bring a, uh, a board of solid color up. All right, three. Object number 1,150 of 85. What? <laughs> this drawing is numbered 1,180 out of 85. Tape on old fingers, or old paper. Tape on old fingers. Tape on old papers is as bad as the rings you encounter that have tape or band-aids band around them to try and make them fit. Oh yeah. I had never really thought about that from like a jeweler's perspective. <laughs> the captions are struggling with the place names. That's not surprising. All right, I need to zoom out. I need to zoom out all the way. And got to use the sandbags. And the archive snake. Danger noodle. I did not have to bring up the archival brick. But we do have an archival brick as well basically just a brick wrapped in paper. All right. So we saw the picture of the building, and I think it's, it's fairly easy to see from what we saw of the building itself. We can see the building in this, in this drawing. Um, again, down here in the corner, in the label. I want to see... Object number 1,150 of 85. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, but yeah, this is just like labeling... Apparently, this is sheet number 31. Um, there's no text on here otherwise as far as like telling us anything, but uh, we don't need it on this one. Uh, we know from the image the mountains go back this way and it, it arcs up. Uh, this is the main staircase and the driveway coming in. Um, so then there's the main entry level, and then the various levels that go up. Um, and they move up partly because design aesthetic at the time was to have um, split levels. This was 1974, so split levels totally in. Um, but also, the building moves up the mountain slope as it moves in this direction. Uh, which I'm guessing this is, like, I, I'm guessing this arrow is pointing to north. And so this direction would be south. I don't know for certain, though. Um, that's my only indication of directionality on this. But so the split levels totally on trend with architectural design aesthetic for the mid-70s, but also functionally relevant to this building uh, as to the geography in which it sits. So it's really cool. Um, also, just a lovely render of the uh, top-down overall view of the site. Um, next we have, I don't know why I'm doing this from the inside out. I think it's because that is the order of the drawings according to how they're numbered, but it would be just as easy to look at them the other way around. 
This is only the second time I've shared any architectural drawings on stream, though, so. Uh, you know, we looked at number 31. This is number 30. So we are going backwards through them, but whatever. Uh, all right. Yeah, I really do wish. Hang on, I have an idea. This is the adventure part of the Archival Adventures. <laughs> is that as I encounter items to share, sometimes we can't read them. Sometimes uh, they're hard to see because the table has a pattern. Um, it's all an adventure. Plus, we discover really neat things that we didn't know were going to be there. Or we discover really, really outdated views that should not... <laughs> that, that we're like, oh, okay. But in this case, it's architecture. Uh, and honestly, not that outdated of a design. Um, let's see. Section between... Okay, so it, it has um, two possible translations coming up for this, uh, for the label here in Bulgarian. Either the section between cuts or uh, cut through the wasps. Somehow I'm thinking those aren't correct. Let me see if I can get something better here uh, with a quick type into the internet with my virtual Bulgarian keyboard. All right. Initial results coming up incision. Uh... Letter, letter, where are you? And there, and a cut in the middle. And then we have that letter, and that letter, and then that one. Yeah, it literally, no, it, it just comes up, cut between axes. I don't know. I'm guessing. All right, so let let's see. What do we think the interpretation? <laughs> they definitely sound wrong, don't they? Yeah. So, cut between axes is what. Um, and I, I have no problem saying it. I've been using Google Translate on my phone and online. Um, that is the online automated translation tool that I have been using because it's free, and. <laughs> actually is not terrible. Uh, it's improved a lot over the years and does a fairly good enough job that we can actually at least sort of make sense of what something means. Cut between axes is what it translates the label on this drawing to mean. I thought I kept this out, but apparently I didn't. So if we look at the building, or even if we look at Let's see if I've got it close by, and now I've lost the gloves. <sighs> Glossy photo prints. It helps to have gloves. So if we've got the top down of, of like the building, or even the actual like image of the building, Cut between axes, I'm assuming, is referring to this section here, the front entryway area, and that the axes in question would be the two wings. Does that seem to make sense? That's what makes sense to me. 
uh, taking that word and trying to figure out what it means in as far as, plus the shape seems to fit. Uh, this is a side view, but I think we've got a square and then a piece that pulls off of the square, so that would make sense for that, that section right there. Makes some sense, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it's the, the main entry area that sits between the two wings. And I just took off my gloves. I don't want to touch the glossies. I only had the one glove on because I was trying to minimize the time uh, spent putting on and taking off the glove, but whatever. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at some more. I think these are really cool. Um, we are starting to approach, like, <laughs> It is technically past 4.30, which is the scheduled end time at present. Uh, our, uh, there is the possibility that I alter the stream time, which I've sort of been considering for a while now, but. Just haven't, haven't discussed with other people yet uh, beyond a mention. Um, so this is definitely one of the wings. Uh, this is drawing number 37. So these drawings are definitely not in order. So I guess it doesn't matter which order I look at them in. Um, a dissected or bisected view. Also possible that that's what it meant. I don't know. This one does not have a label, um, but we can definitely see the, um, this is that main square area. Uh, this would be the auditorium over here on the side. Um, I know it's the auditorium because in the full blueprint images that we have, the interior of that room has seating, a stage, and a piano. Um, so this is the auditorium area, and then this would be huh. This would be, I guess, Interesting. I'm not sure how that fits onto the thing. This is here, so it's set back a ways, um, which doesn't seem to show that well, unless, unless we're looking at the other side. That doesn't seem to make sense, though. But it could be. This could be this part over here. And so we could be looking at this. No. No, it can't be that. Wow, this is really sort of difficult to get orientation on. It has to be here. Because of the way this red angle line is and the side of the building that we're looking at, this is the bottom moving up. So it has to be this part of the building. <laughs> um, which means that this part is set back a ways and begins going up. Uh, and so along here, in, in here, and through this windowed area is where the practice rooms would be. 
then we've got two classrooms over here, and then it moves into that other like back area once it gets up here. We don't seem to have this part depicted on this drawing. I, it, it is quite interesting, if difficult. But then again, I don't spend a lot of time interpreting architectural drawings. Um, I am not the primary archivist that works with these collections. So this is the first time I'm seeing these. Let's see what's next. Oh, wow. With these that are in pencil, it's actually not too bad. I mean, you can still see the, the drawings that are behind it, but. They are really neat. And just look at the artistry in this. The stone facade that she has taken the time to sit there and draw as stone facade um, with irregular shapes and um, so that it's very clear that it looks like stone. And then what they ended up actually using is, is similar. I don't know how well I can zoom in on that. Um, I think if I go all the way in, you might get to see Uh, so the stone that's on the facing here, you can maybe sort of make out. I don't know how clearly it shows up on stream, but it's very similar to what she ended up drawing in, in the pencil drawings here. Which I think is really cool. Uh, we'll zoom back out. I'm just going to quickly go through. I, I would take the time, but we are really short on time. So I'm going to. Here's that front, front view where we can see the auditorium, the main entryway, uh, the, the one wing over here, and then the other wing over there. Um, it looks like it's giving elevations. Uh, increase in elevation for each of the, the roof spots. And we've got um, the red angles here to sort of indicate, um, I don't know how well you can see the red lines. I don't know if you can see the red lines at all. Um, let's go to sort of a mid, a mid zoom and see Ah, now you can. Uh, so there's these lines on here that indicate sort of the slope of the ground. Um, I can try and pull this down a little bit to get it on a not a less patterned background, let's say, uh, so that maybe you can see they're really faint. They're even faint in person. I, I looked for them. I was looking for them and barely noticed them. But so there's a line that goes along here um, that indicates the slope of the ground under the building. So I think these are really cool. I have no background in architecture apart from some knowledge of broad architectural movements from an artistic standpoint uh, from some art history classes that I took when I was an undergrad. Um, but this is really nice. Like the drawing here, the, the drafting work. 
I think is really cool. So as far as I know, and part of the reason I picked this collection, um, we have a lot of our architectural materials, a lot of the International Archive of Women in Architecture. Um, the materials have a, a lot of stuff from that collection, but also, a, a, I should finish the sentence. A lot of the stuff from the International Archive of Women in Architecture has been scanned in some way, digitized in some way, and is available to view online at IAWA iawa.lib.vt.edu. Um, this collection, when I searched there, I did not find. So that was part of the reason why I picked this one to sort of look at on stream, um, because it had not been fully digitized, it, had, it wasn't available digitally online. Um, those collections are probably the ones that people studying architecture are more interested in, the ones that have been digitized. But that doesn't mean that there aren't really neat and interesting things in here, like this school for folk music, folk instruments, and folk singing um, in Bulgaria. And so I had fun with this collection. I, I'm glad that I chose to take a look at it and explore it. Um, but I do need to wind up uh, the stream so that I can pack all this up um, in preparation to head home for the day. So let's talk about what's coming up next week. Um, if you all want to weigh in, did you think that this was an interesting collection to look at? Do you want to see more architectural collections, more uh, architectural drawings? Because I can definitely do more of this. Um, I have ideas about how to make the setup smoother and and uh, easier going forward for showing this kind of material. Uh, like I said, this is only the second time that I've looked at this kind of stuff. It's the first time I've done it with a larger table to where I have a better sense now. And the other one didn't have onion skin, so I know that's a possibility now and I can plan for it in the future. Um, you always like architect drawings? Awesome. Yeah, I will I I will plan to do more of them because we have a lot of these collections and uh, I try to rotate so that I'm doing something from a different collecting area every week. So I try not to do like two architectural collections in a row. Uh, although sometimes I do end up doing like two university history things in a row. Um, Anyway, what we're going to look at next week is the Lucy Herndon Crockett papers. Um, Lucy Herndon Crockett, we glanced at some of her stuff uh, last time we streamed two weeks ago um, in the Prohibition and Temperance stuff, but um, I pulled her papers generally. Uh, she was uh, in the Red Cross during World War II um, and ended up writing books about her experiences and at least one of them was made into a movie and so we're gonna look at her papers next week and then um, coming up later in the month we've got uh, Samuel Herrick papers, the Hard Times Blues collection, uh, a, a collection of glass lantern slides that we're gonna look at. Um, and then about mid-October, I have scheduled another architectural collection on the 19th of October. Um, so those things are in the future. Let me see, though, who we're going to say hello to as far as a raid for today. Um, I have not glanced yet to see who might be live. And I, I do think that we are going to head over and um, you all know, or if you're regular viewers, you know I like ornithology, you know I like birds. And the Monterey Bay Aquarium currently has the aviary cam on. So I think we're going to pop over there uh, if I can make that happen. Here we go. Um, 
Anyway, thank you all so much for joining me. Um, I look forward to seeing you again in the future. I hope that I see you again for another Archival Adventures. Uh, this is a weekly show on Wednesdays, and I really enjoy exploring the collections with you. Um, we never know what we're going to find. So until I see you next time, I hope that you will continue exploring history. Um, thank you all very much for being a wonderful audience and for, for commenting and weighing in, um, sharing your knowledge of the topics. Um, until I see you again, keep exploring history. <laughs>